Hello, best wishes to you today. I'm M.M. Allen. You've entered the podcast wish pick where prayer, creativity, and the divine gently coexist. The last time we were together, we talked nonsense. God will provide wonders even in the midst of a little nonsensical fun. Today I'm talking about powerful prayers and gentle reassurances, but before we do, let's take a moment Make a wish. Now turn that wish into a prayer. I drop your intention into my heart. Your hope will become my prayer for you. I pray your time with the divine extends into your daily routines so you will see answers to prayers and be renewed in faith by God's gentle assurances. I pray that Christ, precious part of the Holy Trinity, becomes your amulet. Eagles are some of the largest birds and they have amazing eyesight. They can stare directly into the sun. Seeing an eagle in flight and enjoying the beauty and majesty of their powerful wings is forever memorable. They see best during the day. Clyde, the leader of the Victory Eagles in Wishapik, never gave up when the perpetual darkness took over the village of Wishapik. The eagles adapted and used their powerful wings to help bring back the light. If you remember, during a previous podcast, I talked about my sister Mary in her horseback riding accident in the Colorado mountains. After I learned about my sister's disappearance, I went home to the Midwest to be with my mother and father. With the blessing from my father, I traveled to the Colorado mountains to witness the scene of this tragic accident. My father and I both thought, somehow, this trip of mine would fill the emptiness of her being gone and her body not yet found. I went to see the spot where Mary slipped into the river. I was to be my father's eyes. My father's prayers and mine were in agreement. We loved Mary Elizabeth, and we prayed for a sign of reassurance and hope. A pastor of a local church and a member of the search and rescue team escorted me to the site. The rescue team had called off the search for her as the conditions had deteriorated. It was too dangerous. When I saw where the accident occurred, To my great surprise, it was almost the exact river scene that I had recently described in Wishapik. At home, this unfinished chapter was left open, undone. Seeing the sight, I spoke aloud. God needed her. The water was so calm on the pathway where the horses had crossed, yet the day of her accident, the water on either side was a torrent in its force. On the wet rocks, a horse's hoof slipped and my sister and her horse were in the rapids. Seeing the scene, I was struck with a profound certainty. The divine had called her home. I viewed the holy spot of her birth into heaven. I was humbled. I believed she was welcomed and treasured beyond what I could imagine for her. Yet the pain of loss still existed in my heart. A friend heard about the accident She was in the vicinity on business, and she drove up to stay with me. I thanked this gentle friend. We walked the river pathways the following day. She accompanied me along the shoreline of the river, looking for my sister's remains, all to no avail. With the exhaustion of the search and the dimness of hope for finding her, I fell into bed early and into a deep sleep. I had a vivid dream. My sister Mary came to me. The presence of light so magnificent, and the softness of her presence brought a warmth of goodness. She was safe. She was loved. She spoke to me. She told me heaven is more joy than anyone could even describe or possibly imagine here on earth. I asked her if she could see God. She said, we feel God. She stayed with me for a short time, sharing some private words. The moments with her were short, 
but I felt we were together for some time. Understanding that her words were everlasting, I awoke to write everything down. This is when I realized her words of truth were not meant just for me. You see, when I came off the mountain, the divine had plans to remind me to remember clearly what she had told me about heaven's joy. I will always hold the treasure of this joy in my heart. I've had several gracious reminders from the divine about the magnitude of this joy. I remain certain that heaven is more joy than we can possibly imagine or describe using language, though many poets and writers have come close. This heavenly joy is purity. I returned to my parents' home and described what I had witnessed. I delivered Mary's message to my beloved parents. I traveled back to Green Cottage, my temporary home. God's first reminder to me that my sister's words were of great importance arrived in the form of a present. My cousin, who I had not seen for many years, came to visit. She knew nothing about the story of Mary coming to me in my dream, nor the details of my trip to the scene where she birthed into heaven. My cousin gave me a small, beautiful box, a gift of grace. When I opened the box, there was a lovely necklace. When I removed it from the box, I saw the word, joy, a necklace with joy boldly written. This was the Holy Spirit's first gentle assurance, reminding me that heaven is more joy than we could ever imagine. I did not complete the river track during Wishapik until July 4th, two weeks after the accident. Just as I finished the chapter, I received a phone call from a sheriff in Colorado. They had found my sister's jacket. It took me a while to locate my parents and family by phone. By this time, I knew completely that she was loved, safe, and existed in the fullness of indescribable joy. The search and rescue team did find her remains, and I extend my deepest thank you to them. Mary's remains were returned to her husband, her children, my parents, and our family. In Wishapik, Winston is overtaken in the river. The rapids were too forceful for him. Jack watches his new friend disappear beneath the raging waters. Jack grieves. He does not see the Victory Eagles come swiftly and lift Winston out of the water. The Victory Eagles, powerful wings, carried Winston out of the water with much care and respect. Deborah told me the song, Victory Eagles, came to her quickly. The song had a powerful energy. She felt the music marching forward in her mind. In Deborah's mind, the eagles sang in perfect harmony with clear, strong voices, and as they flew in perfect formation, they carried Winston back home to Wishapik. With full hearts, heroism, and valor, the Victory Eagles completed their mission. I introduce you to the Victory Eagles in Wishapik. Oh, no. 
of glory through the air. Swiftly we move without a moment to spare. We're the fig tree. Eagle's wings are powerful. Our prayers, similar to eagle's wings, are powerful and essential. They do fly high and soar. I thank Deborah for her song of hope. Simple prayers are powerful. They transform the darkest of times. Deborah's lyrics include the line, Swiftly we move without a moment to spare. Let's be swift to pray. Let us be patient to listen and watch for the divine's gracious reassurances. In the fantasy land of Wishapik, and before Winston disappeared down the river, he told Jack the physical key to his father's trunk was an amulet. The amulet would help Jack return the light to Wishapik. Jack wonders and has doubts as to why an amulet would be helpful to him. Despite Jack's doubts, he begins a new journey when he chooses faith. In real life, each of us will have many moments of doubt, yet the divine embedded faith deep within us. From the beginning of time, faith has existed within our soul. It may be as small as a mustard seed, but it is there. Each of us makes a choice to grow our faith. Christ is the anointed one. Christ is within us, around us, and beside us. This anointed space is an offering of safe haven and mental clarity. A new journey begins when we choose to believe and grow our faith. We choose to participate in something larger when we invest in prayer, meditation, daily moments with the divine, and through the word. Each of us is invited into this pattern of daily devotion. As our faith and intimacy with the divine grows, signs, miracles, and wonders overflow. These are the lovely, gentle reassurances. This is a gift of grace we receive freely from the heavenly place of joy. Deborah remembers me telling her about the key, Jack's amulet, and that Jack would have to place it over the neck of Osiris in order to disempower him. Jack needs courage and strength. Deborah thought about how mysterious an amulet is and its ability to endow a person with courage through its offering of protection. She felt Jack did not know if he could accomplish the task he faced. Deborah understood that Jack was in a moment of deep questioning, which opened him up for a greater truth to be revealed. Deborah felt the amulet represented the symbol of the strength Jack was building within himself and the growing belief that something much larger was at work in his life. I introduce you to the song, Amulet. Amulet, are you real? Amulet, amulet, can you heal? Can you help me find the 
path Will you take me home at last? Amulet I fear to ask What is my chosen task? Amulet Amulet Am I he? Amulet Amulet Why ask me? Can I be the one To disarm King Ramsay's son? Amulet, I am too young Can this fight be won? Amulet, I see You are just a simple key Is there something more that you might be? Amulet, amulet, I will go. Amulet, amulet, I don't know what will come to be. But since you've chosen me, I'll wear you courageously and face what is asked of me. Amulet, I see, you are just a simple key. Is there something more that you might be? Amulet, I see, there is something more. The turning point has come for our character, Jack. He is on his way to saying, yes, I believe I can accomplish this task. Jack's doubts are manifest within this song, and he cries out for protection and to be spared the task ahead. When he accepts that he was chosen, he decides he will do what is asked of him. Jack will face it courageously. Thank you, Deborah, for the overflowing wonderful treasures in this song, Omulent. Next time, we'll be talking about toves. These gruesome-looking creatures first appeared from Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass. In Wishapik, the toves became shy, easy-manipulated cohorts of King Osiris. The toves' greed for their heart's desire, cheese, makes them unable to escape the king's demand. They are stuck. Many times we become stuck, but with a tiny wisp of the unexpected, the Divine shows up to guide us through. Thank you for listening. I'm M.M. M. Allen in Wishapik. In your daily routine this week, enjoy your special time with the Divine. My prayers are with you. Breathe in all good things. Goodbye for now. Tickety-boo.